2020 and China are still coming out with fake Nintendo switches and if you haven't seen our previous videos Pow Kitty is back again with the fake consoles as much as we hate them Mad respect for them bringing out more fake Nintendo switches I don't know how Nintendo hasn't got on their tail and started to throw cease and desist letters at them But hey ho if you're bringing them out Pow Kitty your boy here is buying them. So this is the Pow Kitty X2. It's got some pretty decent specs. It has a quad core 1.3 gigahertz processor, 3000 milliamps of battery power, 256 megabytes of RAM, and a seven inch IPS display. So in reality, this should be able to play your PlayStation 1 games. And that's what it's trying to sell. It's trying to sell that it can play all of your Nintendo consoles, Game Boy Advance, SNES, NES, and even PlayStation 1. So I've got it in for you. It's called the Pow Kitty X2. I'm gonna unbox it and share with you my experience. But before we do that, I do need to say a big thank you to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. If you've got plenty of time on your hands, creative and productivity classes can be a great way to help you structure your time and learn some great new skills where we're all inside. You can learn to code video games, create YouTube channels, and do filmmaking classes to help turn your passion into a hobby. I specifically like the lesson by Dan Mace about editing and how he tries to capture his audience in the first few seconds, just like we do in our intros. Skillshare is giving away two, three months of premium membership to the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description box below to help you explore your creativity. After that, it's around about $10 a month. So a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now, let's jump in. Let's take a look at the Pow Kitty X2. And as you can tell, that package in there, it's got rips, it's got scuffs, like this thing didn't come packaged very well at all. And you know, the packaging, the packaging is just rubbish. Here it is. Oh my Lord. Oh my, it's huge. This thing is big. Oh my lord. Okay. I, I, that trigger button is already terrible. Let's jump into some of the stuff you get. You get a micro USB, some manuals, all in Chinese, so I can't understand it. Now, let's take a look at this. This is the Pow Kitty X2. I'm going to jump right in and turn it on. I've got my Nintendo Switch here, so you can kind of see the size of this thing. Like, it is very similar, you know? Very similar screen size. It's got those joy cons. And one thing I noticed, right, is that when they released all of their pictures of the Pal Kitty X2, the actual colors were flipped to make it opposite of Nintendo Switch. Now that's came out, it's identical to the Nintendo Switch. The same color combos on the side, etc. Now, I'm, uh, 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 oh my God, that analog stick. You probably can't see that if I come up close to the camera here. This spins, so when I try and push up, my finger just slides off the analog stick. That is not good at all. The screen though, I'll be honest, viewing angles are okay, it's bright. Like you probably can't see it because of my actual studio, but it's kind of bright. Now, analog sticks, awful, disgusting, absolutely rubbish. The D-pad here is near identical, well it is identical to the A, B, X, Y buttons. So they've basically just used the same motherboard inside, I can imagine, and the same shell. They just flipped around the analog stick. Oh my god, they, that is not good at all. Oh my lord. You've got your start select down here. You've got your reset button, which is quite smart. That's almost like the, the home button on the original Nintendo Switch. That's kind of a smart idea. You got your analog stick again, this spins round, so you're not gonna get much grip. And then your A, B, X, Y buttons. On the top here, you got your mini HDMI out, your SD card, a volume rocker, a couple of buttons there, which is good. Not many companies do that anymore, especially out of China. You've got your headphone port, your on and off button, and these shoulder buttons are really, really bad. So it feels like the triggers are actually on the bottom here in the corner. So when you go up, I'm pressing it, nothing's clicking up here. That's really, really bad. This one works, but my, my right one doesn't work. And you can't see 
but on the actual triggers, the R and L are facing the opposite way. So if I was to actually turn this round and show you, it probably won't focus, the R and L, they're actually around the wrong way. So that, that's very poor manufacturing from these guys. So, and on the bottom, two micro USB ports for adding in your controllers. And then on the back, all plain. This is absolutely disgusting. You've got, you know, it's just a poor looking handheld, but in terms of gameplay, let's jump in. So this is your user interface. I'm not 100% sure what this is running. Probably RetroArch, I think it is. Uh, and this is what the UI looks like. And in all honesty, I'm actually liking it. The UI is simple, clean. You could give it to a kid or someone new to the retro handheld like community, and they could understand what you're doing. You go into game, you've got some, you know, emulators here, Famicom, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Color, Game Gear, Mega Drive, Neo Geo, and PlayStation, and Super Famicom, which is nice. So there, they are the emulators that it can run. Um, apparently, it has an N64 emulator in here, but in all honesty, it's probably not going to work. But we'll try. Let's jump in. It's got the Pow Kitty logo down here as well. Like, as soon as someone sees that, they're going to think it's trash anyway. So let's jump into it, shall we? From afar, this looks legit. It's very, very thin. You know, it's the same somewhat size than the Nintendo Switch here, you know? It's just a bit thicker. Screen's looking good. Very colorful, high saturation. Button feedback's good, but you can see the screen tearing there. Oh boy. And how do I get into... Okay so, okay, so it is RetroArch. If you press the uh, power button, you can get into low, st uh, l l low state? Load state, save sets. What is going on with my punctuation? Load state, save state. Quick, you can quit RetroArch and you can resume. A ton of screen tearing. A few frame rate drops. Oh, whoops. So the analog stick is very hard to use on this. Oh god. But it is like playable, you know? Like I'm I'm getting up the stairs. I'm hitting what I want to hit. It's just the analog stick and the screen tearing. Not a great combo. But it's handling it better than I thought. And in reality, this is a very expensive handheld. It's like $70 or $80. And for that, you could pick up an RG350 or an RK2020 that can emulate far, far better. But it's doing all right, actually. <laughs> I was so hoping to, like, rinse this handheld. And, like, it's definitely not worth $80. No, no, no. More like 40 But I was hoping it would play PlayStation 1 ROMs poorly. But it's impressed me slightly. But that's what you get out of a quad-core processor. It's just a shame it's only got 256 megabytes of RAM. Right, so to get out of this, we go back, and now I wanna show you N64, because it does have an N64 emulator in here, but my lord, it, I doubt it will work. I've installed the file, let's see, let's see how it goes. Can you hear that? Oh. Buttons are mapped, or at least half of them are. Like, definitely frame rate drops. Audio sounds like it's about to crash. How do I drop my... How do I drop my mushroom? You see, buttons probably haven't been mapped then. Yeah. Buttons have not been mapped correctly, but... I thought it would literally break playing this. It's playable, but by far not enjoyable. But I'm impressed with how 
well it's emulating even like I thought it wouldn't emulate it at all I didn't even think it would load it like you can you can do some button mapping I'm sure if you go into input uh, input sorry and then you go to user binds and you can go down and you can button map all of your stuff but uh that's a little look at N64 it's stretched as well slightly you know poor emulation there we can try something else should we try some Game Boy Advance the speakers though are well located they're down here on the bottom which is quite nice so they're not you know in the way of my hand or anything let's -a go oh Green tearing on that. Frame rate's looking good though. The D pad is really screwing me up. Getting grip on this D pad. Just near impossible. Bye bye. Can I like change the screen input to so looks as if I can't change the resolution or aspect ratio, which is quite bad. That's not good. So you always have to have stretched. Like it's running the Game Boy Advance ROMs quite well. It's just a shame that the stretched aspect ratio really encourages the screen tearing and Poor graphics, really. Ew. So there you have it. A little look at some emulation. Game Boy Advance. N64. PlayStation. You know, like, it's not a bad handheld. It looks good, I think. I think a lot of people will be encouraged by the look of this thing. The Game Boy Advance ROMs, it runs really well. So I can imagine it will run your, your Famicom, Super Famicom really well too you got your classic Game Boy emulator on here PlayStation and N64 no way Jose not at all but you know like it's not a bad handheld but for $80 I don't know why they've got that $80 price tag too I think it's just because it's big they're like the bigger the better right people must be able to afford it if it's bigger because they want it but in all honesty it's another pow kitty device that isn't good quality it'll be chucked in your uh, wardrobe within a week or so you know i don't think it's a worthy pickup but i always love seeing what china are doing in terms of fake consoles so there you have it guys a look at the fake nintendo switch that came out of china just a week ago called the pow kitty x2 if you do want to see a full review there will be one on our website in a week or two for you guys to consume as per usual thanks for watching and a big up skillshare for sponsoring this video and i hope to see you guys in the next one peace